Yeah. Cool. So how have you, you know, your, your journey through, through faith, you know, yeah. through coming to know Christ and then that, that period of, of kind of that rock bottom period, but also, you know, now, now again, coming back to him right. in, in, in a stronger, in a stronger way. How has that affected your ministry? Yeah. Uh, I mean, for us, I think it's based out of gratefulness. Mm. Um, I'm so glad to be saved. Mm. Um, and I know what it means now mm-hmm. that I love um, to do whatever it is um, that I can honor my father with. And so we see ourselves, even in the music, people tend to cater to us. What kind of foods do you like? Do we have the, this? It's so not what we're about um, that when we get there, we love to flip it on them and start to serve them. And by doing that, uh, Ephesians 2.10, again, trying to find the good works. And, and part of it's just looking. We go around so blind with our own agendas in our daily lives that we don't see the person just sitting there, you know, who, who works every day so quietly next to us, maybe in the cubicle next to us, and, and, and we never even get to know them or, or wherever it might be. Uh, once you start to open your eyes to it, if you've received that salvation from the Lord and you, you live in gratefulness for your own, you can't help but want to tell somebody about it. Mm-hmm. Um, if somebody's hungry and you have the ability to feed them, what? why not? Like, that's your... We're called to do that, like mm-hmm. feed them and clothe them before you even give them the gospel. So for me, a lot of times, you know, you talk about this younger generation. The thing that I see is, is essentially a social justice that comes out of biblical, you know, understanding where, guys, the world is broken and the church is here to preserve as salt and light, you know, to show the way. And if people are hungry and if, if Africa is the way it is, and if Africa, nothing. My sisters are from Appalachia, just on the East Coast, where, you know, they showed up to the house malnourished and beat up. Yeah. And uh, we can take the broken in. Um, we can, more than that, we can go where they are mm. and get dirty with them like Christ did. You know, you read that about the Samaritan woman. Uh, I heard a pastor say the other day, if we want to be more like Christ, we need to find some prostitutes and homeless people mm. and go hang out with them. And, mm. and at first, you, that kind of shocks you, but the truth of it is, uh, he went to the ghetto, to the places where people were not going, you know, the, the religious folks. And so for us, we go to the churches to sound the call. Because Help us. It used to be, and not in your generation, but it used to be, you know, that the, uh, you know, it says love our neighbor as ourself. That used to be the person next door. But now with the internet and television, I can watch something happening in Darfur the minute it happens. Yes. And I'm not, I have no more excuses um, to turn a blind eye to the things that are going on in the world. So, yeah. uh, but it's for the sake of the gospel that we do it, not just to feed them. Because if we were just feeding them, we would just be a relief organization. Mm. But we have hope to fix the problem. Mm not just to medicate it and numb it, mm-hmm. but to actually uh, reestablish, you know, the kingdom of God in their hearts and lives. So. What are some practical ways do you think that young people, you know, maybe, maybe Christian young people or, or people that you know, don't, don't even step foot in the church building, what are some ways that they can, can live out that social justice, you know, not, right. not only in Africa, but also, right. you know, right next door? What do right. you think? You would be blown away at some of the things that we have seen people do. Um, raising money for, for causes. Like, there is no, I, I used to, I remember being at the dinner table one day telling my parents I didn't think one person could change the world. Um, and I remember my parents' strong <laughs> opposition to that. And now that I'm, I'm old enough to have some perspective, uh, 15 and 16 year olds younger are, are more passionate than, than anybody. Oh, we're tired, we're getting, t- I say that, I guess we're still young, but you know what I'm saying. Um, there's an endless list of things. It's not just serving in your church. You don't have to just look for ways to be in the choir, this, that, although that's great, and, and I did that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could, uh, through your youth group, I mean, that's a small army. Mm-hmm. I mean, 10 kids getting together, five kids getting together, instead of going and toilet paper in people's houses like I did, you can use that energy, you know. Uh. To, there are simple things. You can serve in homeless shelters. There are tons of um, single mothers, and like, the, you know, the scripture, James um, 127 says, pure religion before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to live unspotted before the world. I promise you, it would, you would be hard-pressed in any neighborhood, whether wealthy or otherwise, to not find a single mother, to not find an older woman who, or, or, or man who's widowed, um, and to just take care of them. I have two on my street, and I mow their lawns, and we just go sit with them. You don't have to have this you know, international conglomerate and all these dollar bills. In fact, you might be better serving them without, without money, you know. Some of the worst things we can do is just hand out money on the street to mm-hmm. folks that need it or whatever. But you can go to soup kitchens, certainly, and do that. Um, but more than that, you can just take time to listen to people, not be in such a hurry to convert them or to shove Jesus in their face, mm. but just to talk and get to know them 
and so they can trust you, so they, they can know that you actually care, mm. and then they'll be open to, to receive, you know, the gospel. Um, I, I hope that helps. I, I, we're so prone to mm. go on mission trips where it's strictly <clears throat> the hardcore gospel, like the meat and potatoes, which is awesome. But uh, America is dying, and people are sending missionaries here. Um, and you can't win Americans anymore when people are blowing up our buildings um, the way that they are by just throwing the gospel in their face and expect them to not puke on it. You have to love them first. Good. And that's, that's how it is. So.